I've watched your speech, and, and I took one point away from it, which I thought was you really kind of stated, which was for students when they come out of university not to be daunted at the challenges they face them, and to be enthusiastic, be enthusiastic and passionate about things. Mm. Is that still a key message you would send to students and young people who are coming out of university and looking to go into things they're really passionate about? I think the most important thing from any employer's point of view, and you know, it applies to all of us when we go for a job, whether we're freelance or whether we're looking for a, a full-time salary job, is, is making yourself stand out from the crowd. And enthusiasm and passion and adaptability, it's, it seems to me, are the add-ons, the, the value added, if you like. I think particularly nowadays, when I grew up, I, mean, I didn't go to university. I went to Kew Gardens and did a diploma there. Um, I was an 11 plus failure. I left school at 15. I, I went into further education, but City and Guilds and then Kew for a diploma. Um, so in a way, I wasn't part of an enormous mass of graduates, which is reality now. And it's making yourself stand out from the crowd, I think, which is so important. Enthusiasm does that, passion does that. So does adaptability. And all the extra little add-ons that you can get to make you make yourself different, really, from the general run of the mill. I never had a career plan, because I think if you have a career plan, it can only go awry, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But I, I hope what I have had is, is um, the ability to spot opportunities. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you know, you've been very lucky. And I'm the first person to say I've been very lucky. I have. But I've also taken risks. Um, and take one or two chances and sort of wade things up. And there's a, there's a strange thing when you're in the public eye, and this may well crop up tonight, um, journalists in particular and critics, they do like to pigeonhole you. Mm. They like you to stay where, you know, Gardner, TV Gardner, he does that, you know. And then I go and do the last night of proms, and well, proms, not just last night, and music on the radio and a chat show, and, and they get a bit nervous. Yeah. And I think they get a bit irritated that you're, you're having a go at these things and my bottom line has always been would I like to do it would it be enjoyable I also try and keep at the back of my mind would it embarrass my audience if I'm doing that if I do it really badly now the chance that you might fall on your face flat on your face it shouldn't stop you doing it but if you think you know you're making a real pig's ear of it clear off you know but I don't see why you know, just irritating critics and journalists because you're doing it and you're probably making a reasonable fist of it should stop you. It's, you know, it's one life that we all get. Have a go, and I've, I've had a go. It has to be, because he's so iconic to our generation, well, several generations, you know, my, you know, parents and co, um, us, you, there are there's four or five generations in a way that he crosses and everybody's watched his life um, and what he's endured and speaking to him about that and about how he coped with it and about the fact that he isn't bitter and his response was there's no time for it we have to move on we have to do other things so yes it was magical to sit down with Nelson Mandela in a garden that, you, that you've created for him and just talk to him for half an hour as you're talking to me yeah. now was something I'll never forget. He was a very, very extraordinary man. And everybody from the Queen downwards who's met him is struck by this quiet charisma, grace, I suppose you might call it. Um, and he isn't bitter, he, but he's anxious that we should move on from that. It was a delight and an honour to meet him. And he's not overawed. You, you, one isn't overawed by him because... He doesn't let you be overawed by him, but, mm. but nevertheless hugely impressed by the man. I've got to the stage now where I have to admit that I've now lived in Hampshire longer than I lived in Yorkshire. Mm. <laughs> Twice as long yeah. as I lived in Yorkshire. I moved away when I was 20. Um, and it's my adopted county now. People from Yorkshire always say, what are you doing down there? And they always say missionary work, converting them, <laughs> converting the heathen. Yeah. Um, but I'm very fond of it. I love Hampshire. Um, I, I like the water. I like the coast. I potter about in a boat. So the Solent suits mm. me well. And Winchester, you know, it's the, it's the, the capital of, 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 of Wessex. And I've been a deputy lieutenant of Hampshire, DL, for a good few years now. And I do regard it as home. This is where I live now. I'm an Ilkley man. 
I'm a Yorkshireman mm, mm. who's made his home in Hampshire, and yeah. I don't think nowadays one can afford to be too xenophobic. Yeah. I love going to Yorkshire. Yorkshire's in there. Mm, it's, mm. I'm, I'm in it all the time. But I'm in Hampshire too, and I'm very fond of it. And I love Winchester. I love the cathedral. I get the great delight of doing a carol concert there every Christmas to raise money to fund choristers. And that's a huge treat. And yeah, I'm flattered and honoured and delighted to be a part of it. Great. Well, thank you for your time, Alex. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.